Hey, so friends, welcome back to So Easy with Shelby and Gabby. I'm your host, Kay Stewart. If you're brand new to my page, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that I'm going to be posting for you each week. Today, I don't know if you've been keeping up with it, but Butterick has some new winter patterns and I am so excited about the one that we're going to be doing today. Today, we're going to be doing pattern B, like Butterick, 6717. And we're actually going to be doing view B. We're going to be doing this coat right here. When I saw this pattern, I immediately fell in love. There are so many good things I can say about this coat. But the one thing that I did love about the coat was, I love the way they have the ruffles in the front. That looks really good, that fullness in the front, when you have on a hat or scarf. And then another thing I noticed about this coat was, she had her sleeves rolled up. That means you can do a lighter weight coat, so on those summer nights when it's a cool night, you can actually throw this on and be ready to go. So you know my motto, grab your material, grab your scissors, and let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is you want to make sure, that, of course, that you have the pattern. The next thing you want to do is we're going to cut out all of our pieces that we're going to be using. We're going to be using pieces number one, piece number three, piece number four, piece number five, piece number six, and piece number seven. Now, piece number one asks us to make sure that we have two of the fabric and two of lining. Now, I'm not doing a lining material because normally when I do a lining material, it's either a lightweight material, and sometimes I do like a different color, but I want my coat to be monochromatic, and I want it to all have one um, pattern. So I'm actually going to be using my material for my lining. So if you're, if you're using material, you want to cut out four pieces of number one. On piece number five, which is our collar, you're going to have to cut out two of these pieces as well, but you're also going to have to cut out some interface. You want to cut out one piece of interface. So the first thing you're going to do is we're going to grab piece number one, which is our flaps that are going to be on our coat. And you're going to put them right sides facing, like this. Grab you some pins, of course. Oh, one other thing. Let me give you a tip. Now, you don't have to do that. This is optional, but this is something that I do when I have a big project, such as the one that we're getting ready to do. When I know that there's going to be a lot of stitches, there's going to be some top stitching, one thing I do is I go ahead and I pre-thread my bobbins. That way, when you're sewing, you don't have to stop and re-thread some bobbin. You already have those bobbins. So, as you can see right here, I have my bobbins already pre-threaded. I did four extra ones, so I figured if by the time I go through five bobbins, if I still have to thread another bobbin, then it'll be time to take a break. So, that's just another tip for you. Go ahead and pre-thread your bobbin so when you're sewing, you don't have to stop and re-thread that bobbin. You can just pop in a new one and keep pushing. So, the first thing we're going to do is you're going to get piece number one, and you're going to put them right sides facing. Grab you some pins, because we're going to pin, so you know my motto, anywhere we pin is where we're going to sew. We're going to pin... The right front side of piece number one and you're going to pin it all the way around to the bottom edge and then you're going to go over to your machine and we're going to use a basting stitch a basting stitch is your longest stitch that you have on your machine for me it's a five centimeter stitch so I'm going to base from the top of here all the way around this curve all the way down to this edge over here when you've done that it's going to look like this <clears throat> it's going to look like this when you've already basted it in place. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to get rid of some of this fullness I have right here because we're going to flip this inside out. Make sure you don't cut your stitches, but you want to get rid of some of that on that corner, that extra material. So once you do that, we're going to flip this inside out so that it's right side showing and you're going to flip it through there grab your point turner or you can use a pencil or a ruler or whatever you have i'm going to use my point turner and just make sure you get all of your edges out once you've done that take this over to your ironing board and you're going to press it flat once it looks like this the next thing you want to do is we're going to go over to our machine again you're going to base from the bottom of this edge all the way around the curve here all the way up to this point all the way down to here then you're going to take it remove it from your machine going to take it back and then we're going to put it on our regular stitch and we're going to top stitch the top head the right front side of it all the way down to the bottom so I'm going to just tell you that one more time you're going to baste it 
all the opening edges that you have right now we're going to base those down and you're going to use your longest stitch you have on your machine then you're going to take the edges that's already closed up and we're going to put a top stitch with our regular stitch and then i'll come back and show you the next step you should be back from your machine and this is what your piece number one looks like now so you have your basted edges from here all the way around the armhole all the way down here and then you have a top stitching here so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab piece number three which is your big piece here and you're going to find these little markings that we put make sure that you transfer all your notches i have a notch there as well and all your um, markings from your pattern onto your material so you're going to grab piece number one we're going to attach that to piece number three and we're going to attach it here first thing you want to do is grab your notches you want to match them up and get your pen and we're going to stick a pen right there you're going to do the same thing at the top corner stick a pen so you know when i stick a pen in something that means we're going to be going over to the machine and we're going to be sewing it and you're going to do the same thing down here find your armhole notches and pin them together now we're going to go back over to our machine first thing we're going to do is we're going to base our piece number one and piece number three together and you're going to just basically use the um basing stitches that you already have we're just going to go over them again until you get to the end here and then we're going to do another thing once you basted this down to piece number three we're going to put a reinforcing stitch from the top of this piece all the way down to the end of it and you're going to use your regular stitch we're not going to be doing a basing stitch you're going to be doing a regular stitch let me show you what it'll look like let me get this one out the way when you come back from the machine it's going to look like this my piece number one and piece number three are basted together and i've also added the reinforcements reinforcement stitch from the top of the edge all the way down to the bottom with your regular size. So grab your scissors because we're going to put a little clip in our piece number three. So where you have this circle, the big circle here, you're going to take your scissors and we're just going to make a little clip down into that circle. Just like that. So it's going to look like this. You'll see why this makes sense a little later, but right now, don't go past the circle. You want to go into the circle and clip it. Do this for your other piece and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so you're back from your machine and you have both front of your sides done to your coat. So you want to go ahead and grab the back of your coat because we're going to pin this down, right sides facing, and we're going to pin it at the shoulders and down the side seams. So grab your material, find your notches at your shoulders, always start at the shoulder notches. That way you know your coat is lined up. And we're going to pin that down. So you know when we pin it, that means we're going to the machine to sew it. Do the same thing on the other side. Pin it at the notch at the shoulder. And you're also going to pin down the side seams as well. So flip your coat to the side like that. Find your notches because you have notches in your side seams as well. Match those up and stick a pin in it. Do one under the arm. And you want to pin all the way down. Don't be afraid and don't be shy, especially if you're brand new to someone, to using lots of pins. When I first started, I used a lot of pins. Because you want to make sure your fabric doesn't move when you're at your sewing machine. You just want to pin all the way down to the bottom so that it matches up well. Do the same thing for the other side. Again, find your notches. Find your notches and line them up. And go ahead and put a pin in them. I like to put a pin right under the armhole because you definitely don't want that to shift while you're doing your coat. And you want to pin all the way down. I just normally just take one and put a pin like in the middle and then do at the bottom so that you know it lines up well.
Take that over to your machine. You're going to sew using a regular stitch, 5 eighths of an inch. From this, for your seam allowance, you're going to go all the way down your shoulders and down the side seams. And then we'll have a couple more steps and then we'll almost be done. And I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and I recruited the help of my body double. This is what your coat should be looking like right now. You should have your shoulders and your side seams sewn together. As you can see, I went ahead and put my serger on mine to get a nice clean edge on the inside. You can do that if you don't have a serger, don't worry about it. You can take the seams and open them up and press them flat. That will keep them, um, or you can do a zigzag stitch on, your, um, on the edge and that will give you the same effect as a serger. So I also went ahead and I took my serger and I went around the whole bottom of the edge of the coat. The reason I did that is because we're getting ready to hem it. And it's always good to have a nice clean edge when you're hemming. Again, if you don't have a serger, don't worry about it. You can either fold it over twice and have a nice clean edge on the inside of your coat. Or you can take and do a small zigzag stitch all the way around, which will give you the same effect as a serger. And then you're going to do what I'm going to do which is I'm going to fold it over about a half an inch and I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to pin it. We're going to do that all the way around, all around the round part, all down the back and back up to this side. Then you're going to go and you're going to take your front part of your coat where we started that clip and we're going to start at the clip part and we're going to fold it over about a half an inch just like we did the bottom and you're going to pin it. And you're going to pin it down. Just like that. And when you get to that corner, what you're going to do is, because you will already have this side sewn down, when you get to that corner, you're just going to fold it over almost like if it was a triangle. That'll give you a nice clean finish on the inside of your hem. So we're going to pin that down too. So when you come back from the machine, you're going to have a freshly hemmed coat all the way around from the clipped edges to the other clipped edges. And then I'm going to show you how to attach your collar. Okay, go ahead and grab your collar pieces out. The, you're going to take one of your collar pieces that needs to interface and you're going to interface it to the wrong side of the material. Go over to your iron, you're going to press that down. Then you're going to come back here. You're going to grab both of them and you're going to put them right sides facing. So as you can see, I have my collar, they're right sides facing. And you're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance from the top of this corner, top of both of those corners, to your unnotched edge. Again, you're going to sew down your collar and you're going to sew down the both sides and the unnotched edge. Once you've done that, you can come back over here because I have mine sewn down. I'm just going to get rid of some of this extra right here so when we flip it inside out it doesn't give us the extra bulk so I'm going to get rid of some of that and I'm going to do this corner too that way you can get a nice smooth finish and just do something on this side You're going to flip this inside out. You're going to take it over to your iron and you're going to give it a good press. Once you give it a good press, you're going to go over to your sewing machine. And this is optional. I am going to do this. You can add a top stitch just like we did earlier for the flaps. So go ahead and grab your point turner. This is here. And poke out your corners like that, like that. Again, take it over to your iron and give it a good press. 
Okay, grab your collar. Now, we're going to be working on the side that has the inner facing. That is the side we're going to attach to the coat. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find that little edge where we put that little clip at earlier. And you're going to find the edge of your collar and we're going to pin them together. Grab some pins and I'm going to pin it together. Going to do the same thing on the other side. Find that other clipped edge, find the edge of your collar, and pin them together. Now remember, we're only pinning down the inner face portion of our collar. So now you're going to go through, get your um, shoulder seam, and you're going to line everything up. Use your little notches that you have. You should have some circles and some dots that's going to show you where your collar meets your, your coat. Find those notches and those marks and line them up and pin it down. Okay, so you want to, now that you have your inner face side of your collar pinned to your coat, you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew 5 8 of an inch seam allowance straight across these two. Now, once you've done that, you're going to have this other piece that's over. It's almost like a lip. And what you're going to do is you're going to fold this under about half an inch because we're going to slip stitch this on to your coat. So when you get done, your collar is going to be attached and it's going to look like this on the inside of your coat. Now, this is what I do. This is what I recommend if, you're, if you have a tag that you want to put on your coat. This is the time I do it before I attach my collar. So once you fold this over about half an inch like this, I normally take my collar and I go to the center back. I mean, my, I normally take my tag at the center back of my coat. And I go ahead and pin this down now. That way when you go to slip stitch it, it's already attached to your coat. So go over to your machine and do that. And we're going to add our sleeves. Okay, so we're going to grab our sleeves and we're almost done. So once you have your sleeve, you should see that you have marked on your sleeve. There's a little X and then there's a little line. And that's going to be because we need to grab our tags, which is piece, I think, number seven. You're going to fold this in half, like this, and we're going to put some pins in it. You're going to take this over to your machine, and you're going to sew it down, and you're going to flip it inside out so that you have a nice clean finish. You should already have your buttonhole on your tab. If you don't have your buttonhole, what you want to do is follow, follow the manufacturer's instructions for your machine to attach a buttonhole and attach that on the piece where you have it marked. So on my marking, it's here. So this is where you would attach your buttonhole. And again, you're going to take this over to your machine, you're going to sew it down, and then you're going to flip it inside out. This is what we're going to use to attach to the inside of our sleeve to hold our button if we decide we want to flip our coat inside out. So do that and I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so now you have your sleeve. You have your tab. We've already put this in half. You should have your buttonhole on your tab. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to attach it to your sleeve. You should have two markers on there. There should be a line and then there should be an X. The X is going to be for your button on the outside of your jack, I mean out of, outside of your sleeve. So we're not going to worry about that right now. So you want to go ahead and sew this down to the line on the inside of your sleeve. Then you're going to fold it over like this. 
I'm going to grab a little pen. I'm going to pin it right there. And you're going to go back to your machine and you're going to sew straight across the top so that it will stay flat like this on the inside of your sleeve. Once you've done that, you're going to take your sleeve and you're going to flip it over to the other side. Find your notches, match them up, and pin them down. You're going to take this over to your sewing machine. You're going to use 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and you're going to sew from the top of your armhole to the bottom of your wrist. Once that's done, your sleeve should look like this. Here's your sleeve all put together. Now if I wanted to fold this up, just say I had the jacket on. Here's your tab that's coming out. Okay, there we go. Here's the tab that's coming out with the buttonhole, and your button will be right here. So my button, which is here, which would be right here. So if I wanted to, I could just do it that way, and that's how that look on the outside. So now you're gonna do that to your other sleeve, and we're gonna attach this to our jacket. So you want to grab your jacket. like this, like I have this one done. I'm gonna lean it this way. And as you can see, the collar is already on the jacket. Again, I have to slip stitch it, so I just have it pinned right now. You wanna take your sleeve, and you're gonna open up your jacket to the inside. So you want to look at the notches on your sleeve and it's going to tell you whether your sleeve hole is in the front or in the back. You should have two notches in the back and then there's one notch in the front. So you want to grab your sleeve and you're going to find that one notch that's in the front and you're going to put it inside of your coat. So now you'll have two right sides facing each other. Slide this down your coat. Find your notch that one notch and you're gonna match them up and you go ahead and stick a pin in it. Do the same thing on the other side, find your notches, match them up, stick a pin. Then you want to go down to your seams and you want to make sure that your seams are matching. You hate to lift up your jacket and your seam is on one side and the other one is on the other way so we want to make sure our seams are matching so make sure your seams are matching you want to put them together and you're going to stick a pin in it you're going to go up to the top of the jacket now the instructions is telling you to put some base stitching in there and then you're going to pull them so that the sleeve cap will fit into the sleeve I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you another way to do it. So what you do is, once you have the notches pinned and your seam pinned together, take your sleeve and you're going to almost fold it in half so that you reach the top of your seam. Grab that shoulder seam right there and pin it down. Then you want to go around to the sides and you're going to Straighten it out and put a pin. You can use as many pins as you want on your sleeve because you want to make sure it gets in there nice and snug. You're going to do this all the way around. I'm going to go on this side, give it a little stretch, put a pin. Now that your sleeve is pinned inside of your sleeve cap, nice and snug, go over to your machine and you're going to sew all the way around. You can also finish it off with your serger like I'm going to do. 
once you've done it, if you don't have a serger, don't worry. Just go ahead and do a zigzag stitch. Or you can just cut it close to the, um, you can cut it close to the seam. Okay, so your collar is on. You've added your sleeves to your jacket now. You should have added your decorative button on the outside just in case you want to um, roll your sleeves up and have that tab on the inside with the buttonhole come out like this. If you wanted to do that and have that come up and tie that, you should have that on there now. The jacket is perfect. I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to put this on. I'm actually going to put this on tomorrow. In fact, I'm going to put it on right now so that you can see it. On me. But I am wearing this definitely tomorrow. And I cannot wait to rock it. It's perfect. I do think I'm going to go ahead and make the sash, which is piece number eight, so that I can have something just to close my jacket up because I do like it like this. Another thing I'm thinking about you can do is you can add some snaps to it right here in the middle and that'll keep it closed. I know I like to have my jacket closed at times, so I know that's probably what I will do. Again, it's perfect. I hope this tutorial was so easy with Shelby and Gabby. I look forward for you to coming back and work with me again soon. Make sure that you reach out to me at kcharlescouture at gmail.com if you have any pattern that maybe you want me to um, do a tutorial on. Even if you have done this jacket right here and you want to send me pictures, you can send them there. Join the Facebook group at K Charles Couture. You can post your pictures, leave stories. Let's share some tips and ideas that we can do and share for everyone. I'm also on IG at K Charles Couture. Again, I hope this tutorial was so easy with Shelby and Gabby. I look forward to speaking with you all soon and working with you again. Peace.